so hello everyone welcome to the second lecture of the course in the previous lecture we had an overview of the course where we talked about the course objectives course methodology and the syllabus of the course now in this lecture we are going to talk about where we are as a human being after having done uhv2 that is we'll have a look at self evaluation and what we aim at and that is essentially to mean how do we plan to evolve how do we look at how do we look at evolution for ourselves so where we are that is self evaluation and where do we want to be how do we plan to go there that is self evolution now having a look at the background we can see that we exist as human being we want to have a fulfilling life we have some desires and we have some programs for fulfilling our desires isn't it so all of us want to have a fulfilling life a life where we can be happy every moment we can have a feeling of prosperity within us we can have harmony in our family in our relations when we are living in a society we want to have a common goal living in a society isn't it so these are multiple aspirations that each one of us has and we are also planning to fulfill our desires we are working out day and night to fulfill our desires so it is important for us to understand our basic aspiration and program for its fulfillment correctly and comprehensively now we see that we might have multiple aspirations but underlying all those aspirations is a basic aspiration something that we have discussed earlier also that is our basic aspiration is to live a happy and prosperous life and that also in continuity now can we understand our basic aspiration comprehensively because unless you understand it we are not able to fulfill it in continuity so we can and fulfill our basic aspiration only then we can ensure the fulfillment of our basic aspiration and this is what we have been trying to do in uhv2 we want to study it in further depth in this course that is uhv3 so in uhv2 we explored into these realities we saw that the basic aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity we try to understand what happiness means we try to understand what prosperity means isn't it uh, but still you see that we are not able to ensure in our living in continuity so what is more to be understood this is something that we are going to address in this course so the goal of this course can be viewed as follows so the first and foremost goal is to explore the human reality its being the basic aspiration its fulfillment particularly the self in more depth so we have been saying that yes we want to be happy we want to be prosperous and this essentially means that i have to understand myself now when i go to understand myself i see that there are two realities to be understood one is the body and the other is self isn't it this is something that we had discussed in which we two also we could also see that the body is an instrument of the self and now going further we say that the self is central to human existence and this is something that we'll keep on repeating throughout the course unless i am able to see very clearly that it is me the self for which i am working the body being an instrument unless i am able to see this very clearly i am not able to make my program very clearly comprehensively so this is the first goal of the course the second goal is to explore deeper into the nature and existence as coexistence so we had seen that nature is there which is collection of units human being is a part of nature and there are four orders in nature there is physical order there is bio order there is animal order and there is human order we had also seen that all these four orders are mutually fulfilling to each other it's only that human being once the human being has the right understanding he or she is able to fulfill the other three orders if not then it is not able to fulfill but essentially we naturally accept to fulfill all the four orders including the human order we had also seen partly i'll say not fully that this whole nature is submerged in space and this submergence of nature in the space is something that is called as coexistence so nature is there in four orders and it is submerged in space and this is called as coexistence now this came as a statement this came in nutshell now we'll explore deeper into this and 
uh, we'll try to see how this whole existence is coexistence. We'll also be able to see that this coexistence is central to existence. Then this will enable us to see that everything that we see in the nature and existence is the natural expression and unfolding of this coexistence. Now the mutual fulfillment that we see in the nature is an expression and unfolding of this coexistence. The harmony that we have been exploring, the harmony in human-human relationships, the harmony between human and rest of nature, the harmony in society, we we'll gradually see that this is the expression of coexistence itself. It is the natural unfolding of coexistence itself. By virtue of coexistence, by virtue of the submergence of nature in its space, we are able to have this natural acceptance for harmony at all levels of living. So this is the second goal of the course. Now with this clarity, we can see the role of human being also in further detail in light of the above. So what is our role? When I'm able to see that I am central to human existence and I'm able to see that coexistence is central to existence. When I am able to see that coexistence is central to existence, then I can also see that my role is to understand this coexistence, to have the feeling and thought of this coexistence and accordingly live in coexistence. Now, when I go to live accordingly, I'm able to ensure coexistence in my interaction with human being and rest of nature. So this becomes my role. This becomes my conduct. So you will see as the lectures progress that we are able to now observe in a more focused way. We had an exposure about harmony. We had an exposure about the expanse of living of a human being. We had an exposure about the complete nature. And now we are able to see in a more focused way what this essentially means, what I have got to understand, what feeling and thought has to be ensured in me. So these are the three key points that you can keep in mind. And we'll see that this will be the running thread throughout the course. So what are the three points? Self is central to human existence. Coexistence is central to existence and our role is to understand the coexistence, to have the feeling and thought of coexistence. Now we'll see that our purpose and program depends on the assumption or understanding about a few things. So whatever purpose we have set in our life, whatever program we are trying to pursue, it depends on either our assumption or understanding about these two realities. So in VHV2, we have seen that unknowingly or knowingly, we have assumed something about our purpose in life and some program for the fulfillment of the set purpose. So for example, if you set your purpose to be the richest person in the world, then your program will be decided accordingly. If you make a goal uh, that you have to be the most famous person in the world, your program will be determined by that particular purpose. So can we set our purpose correctly? What purpose is there which is naturally acceptable to us? And that will only really determine what program do we have to make. So you'll see that the setting up of the purpose and program depends on our assumption or our understanding about these two basic realities. First of all, human being. And the second thing is existence. So what do I assume about human being? And so to say, what do I assume about myself as a human being? What am I as a human being? And what are the things around me? this whole existence, what is it? Now, the way I assume about a human being, I'll set my purpose accordingly, isn't it? We'll see how in the next slide. Similarly, the way I assume about existence, we set our purpose accordingly. And that will determine our goal of life, our aim in life, isn't it? Can you see this? We'll see that our purpose and program depends on our assumption or understanding about a few things and what those things are let us see in which we too we had seen that knowingly or unknowingly we have assumed something about our purpose in life and we have some program for the fulfillment of the set purpose isn't it so let's take a few examples if you assume that your goal in life your purpose in life is to be the richest person in the world you will have one kind of program if you feel that your purpose in life is to tour the entire world, your program will be decided accordingly. If you feel that your purpose is to be the most famous person in the world, your program will be decided accordingly. So, so can we set our purpose correctly? This is something that we'll try to see. 
So you'll see that the setting up of the purpose and program depends on our assumptions about two realities. One, human being and the second, existence. So whatever I assume about human being, starting from myself, I set my purpose accordingly. And we'll see how. In the next slide, we'll discuss how. But just try to see whether this is true for you or not. The way you assume about yourself, accordingly, you set your plans. And the way you assume about the existence around you, the nature around you, you set your plans accordingly. Now just try to take a pause and think what have you assumed about yourself? You set aside what you have studied in VHV2 about human being and existence and think from your own end. What have you assumed about yourself? What you are? What this existence is? You'll see that most of the time we are working by borrowed notions about ourselves, about the nature around, about the existence. And they start determining our aspirations. They start determining our thoughts, our feelings, our role. So we had some assumptions about these uh, two realities before UHV2. And now these assumptions have been modified through the process of self-exploration that we went through in UHV2 course. So it's a gradual progress that has started in you. So you thought something about yourself earlier, isn't it? You thought something about the existence. In UHV2, you got some proposals. You started exploring. You started questioning. You started reflecting on these realities. And you, have, you might have been able to come to some conclusion. What are they? We'll try to see. So let us look at some details of this shift in our assumptions and understanding. So what shift can be expected through HP2? So let us have a very particular observation about the various shifts that might have taken place in you through HP2. So before HP2, what did you think about yourself? and about other things. And how do you feel about yourself and other things after UHV2? So just try to see. Before UHV2, uh, we might have assumed that human being is just the body. So when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we see the body. When we look at others, we look at the body. And that becomes a common assumption that human being is merely the body. Isn't it? Did you also think like that? take a pause and try to reflect, isn't it? Before you got oriented in UHV1 and UHV2, were you not thinking something like this? After UHV2, you might have been able to see that human being is not just the body. There's an entity called self. And there are two realities when we talk about a human being. One is the self and the other is body. And the two are coexisting. So one major shift that takes place through the course that you uh, went through earlier, that now when we talk about a human being, we do not only talk about the body. There's another reality associated with the body and we start reflecting upon that. So this is one shift in your assumption or understanding. The second shift that might have taken place in you is that earlier you might assume that this existence is just material. Now, if you look at the syllabus uh, right from childhood to higher education, most of the time we are talking about material things, isn't it? So we tend to assume that existence is just material. Again, material is something that we are able to see with our eyes and that also further reinforces our assumption that existence is only material. But if you remember, we have talked about space in the previous courses. So this whole nature is there in the form of units and the units are submerged in space. So if you look at this particular statement, there's something called unit here. There's another word called submerged or submergence and there is space. So existence is not just material. There is space and in the space are submerged the units. And these units are of two kinds, the consciousness and the material. Now, when you start exploring about the human being, you are able to see that this body is material and the self is the consciousness. So if I go to understand the whole existence, 
it is very essential that I also explore about the human being. Unless I'm able to see that there is a self, that is the consciousness, and along with the self is the body, which is the material thing, we are not able to understand the rest of nature also. So can you see that this shift has taken place in you? What do you think? Could you make out there is something called space that is being discussed in the course? There is something called consciousness in the nature. So this kind of shift might have taken place in you after UHV2, try to find out. Now I'm just raising these points for you and I expect that you explore upon this and try to see whether we are able to see this kind of shift in you or not. Another thing would be regarding your purpose. So if you see, uh, the purpose has been happiness earlier also. We do say that, yes, I want to be happy, but how to make the program for happiness? So you'll see that generally when you go for ensuring happiness, you might, you might be working for more favorable sensations or getting some feeling from the other. For example, when you are planning for a career, one motivation could be that when I have this goal achieved in life, okay, I'll get respect from others. I'll get name and fame in the society and so on. Now you'll see that uh, when I'm aiming at uh, a particular thing in this manner, I'm trying to get some feeling from the other. It could also be the case that when you are working for happiness, you might feel that if I have to ensure happiness, then I have to get more and more favorable sensations. And there are five sense organs. Okay, so can I have more favorable sensation through my eyes, through my nose, through my ears, through my tongue, through my skin? And that might be your assumption about happiness. Now, as we went on exploring, it came out that no, it's not that I just want happiness. I want continuous happiness. And I also want prosperity. And we could see that happiness is to be in a state of harmony. So now this is a major shift that might have taken place in you. Earlier in the name of happiness, you were working for sensation or feelings to be obtained from others. And now you are able to focus on harmony that essentially I want to work for, for harmony. I want harmony. I aspire for harmony. And this becomes your uh, program in terms of ensuring happiness. Now going further, if you have this assumption about happiness, right, then what you do do, you try to focus on accumulation of physical facilities, more and more accumulation, more and more consumption. And assuming that this is unlimited, isn't it? We'll see that we keep on getting news about multiple billionaires, trillionaires across the world, isn't it? And uh, it might be the case that we get uh, also affected by this news. And then we also start planning in that manner that, yes, I have also to be among one of the billionaires of the world. I have to be the richest person of the country. I have to be the richest person of this continent or even the world. Now, what is happening here? Unknowingly, our goal is focused on uh, physical facility and the program becomes accumulation and consumption of physical facility. Now, was it like this for you also? Find out before the workshop, before the course UHV2. Now here, we'll see that with the inputs that we get in UHV2, our program becomes to understand and to live in harmony. Something that we have been mentioning time and again. And when you go to explore harmony, we are able to see that there are four levels here. Human being, family, society, and nature or existence. Now just try to make out whether you are able to see these shifts within you or not. Just try to make out whether you are able to see these shifts within you or not. You can pause for a few minutes maybe and try to make out on each of these points. What did I assume about human being earlier and what do I see now? What did I assume about existence earlier and what do I see now? What did I assume about my own purpose in life and what do I see now? And what was my program earlier and what do I see now? Now I am uh, asking you to pause and think here because this is very basic. If this shift has not taken place in you, the content that we are going to discuss further uh, will be a little less clear to you because unless 
we are able to ensure these shifts within us, we are not able to verify further, we are not able to explore further. So this is very crucial. Just try to explore and verify within you. So this shift is very important to note. If you look at the whole world as a civilization, you'll see that mostly uh, we are assuming that these physical facilities are going to ensure happiness for us. And that's how the whole world as a civilization is busy uh, producing physical facilities, uh, accumulating physical facilities, consuming physical facilities, and missing on the part of happiness, missing on the part of feeling of prosperity, fulfilling relationships. And this has become a kind of phenomenal mistake in the civilization. And we do need to overcome. So when you had these inputs in UHV2, you could see that human being is not just the body, but human being is coexistence of self and body. And if you remember, we had talked about the needs of the self, needs of the body, activities of the self, activities of the body. And this analysis was primarily aimed at making you explore how the self and the body are different. And you can see that the physical facilities can only serve the need of the body, but not the self. So once I'm able to see this very clearly, my program takes a shift. Now my program is not just focused on accumulating physical facilities and consuming it, but rather the first priority in my life becomes right understanding. I'm able to see that as a human being, the first priority is right understanding, the second priority is relationship, and the third priority is physical facility. And physical facility cannot be the complete program for my life. Also, uh, a gross mistake that takes place in our vision is that we assume the whole existence as material, but with a little exploration, we can see that it is not just material, there is space also. We had also discussed that this uh, nature is collection of units and every unit is an activity and the space is no activity. So this existence is submergence of activities in the no activity. Now this might come uh, as something new to you, but we had discussed this briefly. We'll go about this in detail in this course. And we had also seen that this nature is not just material, but conscious units are also there. And this becomes clear only when we are able to understand the human being. Since as a civilization, we are not able to understand the human being as coexistence of self and body, our whole program becomes focused on physical facilities. And our perception towards the nature and existence also gets erroneous. When we look at the nature, we feel that they struggle for survival in the nature and only the fittest can survive. And we also tend to assume that the whole nature is designed like that. And the moment I assume this, I try to apply it in my own living also, in my own relationships, in my own family, in society. And the whole course of development uh, becomes different with this. So I hope that you are able to see these shifts in you after having done UHV2. So with this clarity, you can see shift one that was aimed at in UHV2. And if you look at UHV2, it was primarily focused on two things basically to initiate a process of self-exploration in you. And we had discussed about self-exploration in earlier courses also and in the previous lecture also. So you started verifying, you started reflecting upon your natural acceptance, you started validating in your living. So that is one part. And second thing, it gives you a clarity that human being is not merely the body, but it is coexistence of self and body. And this in turn leads to the following shift in your whole perception. So when you perceive that human being is just the body, your purpose is to expect to live with continuous happiness. And then the effort is to be made outside, not within. Assuming that I am okay, the problem lies with others. Now this is a common assumption. If you look at a thought, your imagination, you will see that most of the time, this kind of thought occurs in you that I am okay, the problem lies with others. And then what you do, try to seek happiness through physical facility, through sensation and trying to borrow feeling from others. And also tend to assume that the requirement for physical facility is unlimited and the program becomes to accumulate as much as possible. But when this shift takes place in you, you are able to see that human being is coexistence of self and body. And the purpose is not just uh, to expect something from outside for happiness. But 
the purpose is to fulfill the desire for continuous happiness and then you can see that the per the <clears throat> and then you can see that the effort has to be made within first of all within and then outside if i am having the right understanding and right feeling within then i am happy within me and then i am able to share my happiness with others going further you are able to see that continuous happiness essentially means to have the understanding the feeling of harmony within me and in my whole expanse of living i am able to see this harmony we can also see that physical facility is required in limited quantity and it is required only for three purposes for nurturing the body for protecting the body and for rightly utilizing the body so for nurturing the body you can make out that whatever physical facility i require let's say in terms of food it is limited in quantity how much food can you consume in a day you can make out how much food you can consume in a year you can make out similarly for protecting the body how many clothes do i require in a season in a year can we make out are they limited or unlimited what do you think similarly the instruments that we require for the utilization of the body are they limited or unlimited how many mobiles do you require how many cars do you require can you make out now unless you are able to see that the need of the self is respect and the need of the body is physical facility you are not able to distinguish between these two needs and you tend to assume that the need for uh, vehicles or clothes or houses or food could be unlimited and then the whole perception is that the need for physical facility is unlimited but with a little exploration we can make out that yes the need is limited and not unlimited and then our program primarily becomes to understand and live in harmony at all levels of our living so try to see this within you try to ask yourself you can again explore and verify within you whether you are able to see this shift try to look at your desires throughout the day try to look at your thoughts throughout the day in your thoughts in your desires can you see this shift so i start by assuming that yes you have been able to see the shift in you unless you are able to see the shift in you going further uh, will be little difficult for you so try to make it out and, and this is what was aimed in uhv2 so the assumption before uhv2 is that human being is a physical entity just the body but after uhv2 you are able to see that human being is coexistence of self and body now we have been repeating these words coexistence self and body but the whole purpose is that you are able to see this reality so if you look at self and body you'll see that the two are coexisting there is an exchange of information between me and the body i give instructions to the body and i get sensation from the body and i am coexisting with the body but i am not the body i am not in the body i am with the body i am a conscious entity existing with the body and the goal if you see before uhv2 might be to ensure happiness through physical facility through sensation or by borrowing feelings from others but now the aim is to have continuity of happiness and prosperity now let me say that you might feel that this is a far fetched goal how can i ever have the feeling of happiness in continuity feeling of prosperity in continuity but just try to make out is this desirable or not do i naturally aspire for this or not i might find it difficult i might find it a very distant goal for me but unless the goal is clear to me how will i make the program correctly similarly through this exploration you are able to see that the program cannot be just to get favorable sensation from the body through accumulation and consumption of physical facility but rather the program is to ensure all the three right understanding relationship and physical facility and that to be the correct priority i hope you are able to see the correct priority so for a human being what is the priority of physical facility in life can you make out what is the priority of relationship in life can you make out what is the priority of right understanding in life what comes first and we had explored earlier that yes relationship holds a higher priority over physical facility and if i have to have harmonious relationship i have to ensure uh, right understanding in me and with right understanding in me only i can make out how much physical facility i require in what way am i going to produce these physical facilities and for that again i need to understand the nature so that becomes the correct priority now these are major shifts that are expected from you after having done the previous course 
So with UHV2, following must have happened and that becomes your qualification for this particular course, UHV3. So I'll say that this is a kind of litmus test for you. Try to find out whether you are able to see this kind of shift in you, this kind of qualification in you. So you have concluded that this content about the existential reality is relevant for you. So just try to find out whether you are able to see that this is your own need to understand in depth. We are going to talk about existential realities. Now this is a course, we have enrolled for the course, right? You will qualify for this course, but unless you are able to make out that this is something that I need at a personal level for myself, you will not have that clarity about the content of the course. So just try to make it out for yourself. Now on the basis of the effort that you have put in to understand this content and to live accordingly, you have concluded that you have to work on yourself first. This is also very crucial. Most of the time we are focused on changing others, changing the society, changing the mindset of the people around, okay? Maybe redesigning the nature. <laughs> is it true? So you have to see whether you are able to get this clarity within you that you have to work upon yourself first. Okay? Because it is your aspiration to be happy in continuity. And it is your responsibility to ensure the right understanding and completeness within you. It is your responsibility to have the feeling and thought of harmony within you. Now with this, you can see that you are responsible for your happiness or unhappiness. Okay. The other or the situations are only a triggering point. Now, this is very important. Maybe somebody uses some language for you right and you feel hurt and then you feel unhappy so if you look at it the words have come to you as an information it is you who assign some meaning to those words and then you become happy or unhappy if the same words are coming from a child you have one kind of feeling within you if the same words are coming from a peer a friend a different kind of feeling comes within you and if the same words are coming from a an old age person, you might have a different kind of feeling. Now, how is it happening? The same words being used, but you are assigning different meanings. It is essentially to mean that you are responsible for your happiness and unhappiness. The situations are merely triggering the preconditionings in us, our assumptions about the other, our assumptions about the situation. Similarly, you are able to see that you are the coexistence of self and body, while most of the effort you have been making are for fulfilling the needs of the body, but we expect or desire to further understand the coexistence of the self and the body. Now, just try to see whether you are able to have this desire or not that the human being is coexistence of self and body and I need to understand it very uh, truly, correctly, precisely. So, human being is not just the body and the self coexisting with the body and I need to have this clarity. Unless I have this clarity, I cannot go forward. And then you are able to see that the whole existence is not just material, the space and some of these space are material as well as consciousness units. So this is something that I spoke earlier also. And this is just to reiterate. So just try to make out whether I'm able to see these things in me or not. And then only I qualify for going further. So to say it again, are you able to see that this is your own need to understand in depth? Let me put a question mark here. These are all certain things to be made out within us. So are you able to see that this is your own need to understand the whole thing in depth and you have to work on yourself first and you are responsible for your happiness or unhappiness. I suggest that you can take a pause, look within, make even some notes here and try to make out yesterday how many times you felt unhappy and how many times you felt that somebody else was responsible for your unhappiness so are you able to see that i am responsible and not the other the other is just triggering the lack of right understanding in me the lack of right feeling in me if i have the right understanding in me if i have the right feeling in me i will not feel unhappy whatever be the situation outside now how to reach that stage is something to be explored verified but I have to make it out for myself. You're also able to see that you have the desire to understand the self and the body and the coexistence of the two. And also that you want to understand that, yes, 
space is there and the nature is submerged in space and i need to understand it correctly so your qualification for uhv3 could be rephrased further so can you see that your attention is beginning to be drawn towards yourself and there is a shift from thoughts like i am special i have to dominate over others in place of that you have a feeling that i am similar to the other i do not have to dominate over others but rather i have to complement the other you have started thinking about what is my real goal as a human being in place of just working for accumulation of physical facilities or consumption of physical facilities we are able to see that the real goal is something else you have started becoming aware of your desires thought and expectations and this is very important so i hope your awareness about your own imagination your own desires thoughts and expectation has gone up through the previous course and this will help you further understand the details in this course and now there is less contradiction within so unless i have the right understanding and right feeling within there are contradictions but as we start self exploring as we start verifying as we start referring to the natural acceptance then the contradictions also are on the way they start going down you are realizing that the goal is more than just accumulation of physical facility so accumulation of physical facility cannot be the goal of life physical facility is just a need of the body and it is limited in quantity so now you are able to think about prosperity versus accumulation of physical facility and do you remember what prosperity means try to recap what prosperity means take let's say 10 seconds what prosperity means so we had said that prosperity is the feeling of having more than required physical facility now there are two basic things underlying this definition one is to see the requirement of physical facility rightly and to be able to see that i have more than what i require this ensures the feeling of prosperity and the feeling of prosperity is not directly related to the quantity of physical facility that i have isn't it maybe i have 20 pairs of clothes but i feel that i need to have 30 pairs of clothes then i feel deprived if i have 20 pairs of clothes and i feel that i need to have only 10 pairs of clothes i feel prosperous so there is a difference between the feeling of prosperity and accumulation of physical facility and when you have this clarity you can see that everyone can be prosperous you can see that the needs of the body are limited in quantity you can also see that there is abundance in nature nature has enough to feed the entire population on this earth uh, some data from uno suggests that the food production every year is six times the requirement and twice the requirement of the whole human population gets wasted away so you can see that there is enough for us to nurture our body but still people are not able to nurture their body properly they are undernourished but once we have this clarity about the need for food the need for clothes the need for houses then we are able to see that yes every human being can be prosperous so think about this think about this you are realizing the significance of relationship now you can see that feeling is central in relationship so we are fulfilling relationships in the family in our organization with our friends and we want to have fulfilling relationships now the relationship also cannot be fulfilled by merely sharing of physical facility okay so you can see that the feeling is central to any relationship if i have the feeling of trust within me if i have the feeling of respect in me when i have affection for the other then only the relationship ensures mutual happiness otherwise not you are realizing that having the feelings in yourself and expressing these feelings to the other is the source of your happiness now there could be two ways of going about it one is to borrow the feeling from the other somebody should trust me somebody should respect me somebody should accept me that is one way of thinking the second way could be i am able to see what trust means and i am very naturally able to trust others because i can see that the intention of every human being is sound it's only the competence that is lacking i can see that every human being has the same purpose program and potential and that every human being is similar to me it's only that i have to evaluate the competence rightly and be complementary to the other i can accept the other <clears throat> with a feeling of affection now there is a total shift here 
in place of borrowing feelings from others i am able to ensure the feeling within me so expecting the feeling from the other is enslavement and cannot be source of continuous happiness and there is a visible improvement in your reaction irritation anger try to make it out try to find it out whether there is a visible change here or not so it might be the case that you were reacting earlier now you are able to respond in your relationships just try to make out whether your reaction has gone down your irritation has gone down the anger has gone down now these are some uh, i'll say negative emotions we do not accept them naturally but we might be caught up here so just try to see whether this kind of shift has taken place in you or not you can see that you have to first develop your own competence and for this the effort to first correct the other or the situation outside has gone down so i have to work for developing my own competence and earlier it might be the case that you started by thinking that i have to change others i have to modify others i have to rectify others now you are able to see that first of all i have to work upon myself and thus the force within you to change the situation outside has come down and you are now more focused on correcting yourself of evolving yourself as a human being and next you can see that you have decided to understand things in depth yourself so if i am able to see that essentially i need to ensure right understanding in me right feeling in me so that depth in my own imagination is enhanced now in place of feeling irritated about others trying to always think in terms of modifying others correcting others i can see that i have to understand myself i have to understand the coexistence of the self with the body i have to understand my needs correctly i have to understand those feelings correctly which i am trying to borrow from others what is trust what is respect what is affection what is love and with this the depth in your own imagination the depth in your own conduct is enhanced so you have questions for which you are committed to find answers now as you go on doing this you might have fresh questions in fact when you go to validate any proposal in your living you get so many questions how to deal with a particular person in a given situation how to come out of this situation how to handle this particular person and so many things right but unless i have the right feeling in me unless i have the right understanding in me i am not able to get an all encompassing solution here and that's how you might have some fresh questions to be responded to and this is something that we expect that will get addressed in this particular course now going further your attention is beginning to drawn towards the self so if you have undergone the shift that we mentioned through uhv2 that can be termed as shift 1 so we can prepare ourselves to go for shift 2 through this process of self exploration that will go through in this course and thus it has become our need to understand the existential reality in depth and to live accordingly so this is something that is expected in this course otherwise we need to keep working hard for ensuring shift 1 if that shift 1 is not ensured that we need to keep on working for that because those are very basic shifts and unless we have those shifts in us going further will be little tedious will be little difficult for us and we can work for shift 2 also but in addition we'll have to keep on working for shift 1 it is needless to say that the task now is going to be far more difficult and challenging so in this course you'll see that we are going to be more intense in our exploration and the two shifts have to be ensured together however if you have realized the actual need for it we'll be able to do it so if the need is clear to you you are able to see that unless i am having this clarity this understanding that desire for continuity of happiness is not going to be ensured so this will make your task easier will not try to get an idea about the shift that is expected to take place if you go through the process of self exploration in this course so with this uh, you can see further what shift is expected from this particular course and uhv3 is designed for the uh, shift further for so the focus of uhv3 is to help for the second shift to take place in you that is to see that the self is central to human existence and the body is used as an instrument now here we are adding this particular statement that the self is central to human existence this is something that i said earlier also but this has to be more explicit now and the need of human being is continuous happiness 
which is fulfilled by understanding coexistence and to have the feeling and thought of coexistence. So this need for continuous happiness is the need of the self. And to fulfill the activity that I have to ensure within me is to have the understanding of coexistence and to have the feeling and thought of coexistence, which will get naturally expressed in the form of mutually fulfilling behavior with human being, mutually enriching work with the rest of nature, and thus ensuring the participation in the larger order that can lead to undivided society and universal human order. Here again, I'll say that you might find it difficult to accept at this moment that can we have an undivided society while the society is full of divisions today? Can we have universal human order? But again, ask yourself, do you naturally accept this or something otherwise? If you naturally accept this, then what is going to be a program? So this further shift will take you through this journey. So you are able to see that the self is central to human existence, the body merely being an instrument. And my need is continuous happiness. Now here, is, here we are making another shift. So earlier we used to say that the need is continuity of happiness and prosperity. And now we are saying that it is continuous happiness only. Because if you look at it more closely, you see that the feeling of prosperity is a part of happiness. Isn't it? So essentially we aspire for continuous happiness. In the previous course, we included prosperity also because people are generally focused on physical facility. And if you leave that part of physical facility, one may tend to assume that we are going to ignore physical facility and which is not the case. So once I'm able to see the limitedness of the need for physical facility, I'm able to make the right program for the self also. And this need of the self for continuity of happiness is fulfilled by understanding coexistence and by having the feeling and thought of coexistence. And then I can see a shift in my behavior, in my work, in my participation, in my organization, in the society around, in the larger order, wherever I am a part. So the total shift through UHV2 and UHV3 can be formulated in this manner. So before UHV2, you had the assumption that human being is merely the body and then you were expecting continuity of happiness and prosperity from physical facility and that through sensation or either by borrowing the feeling from the other or by enjoying the sensation from the body. And then the requirement for physical facility was assumed to be unlimited, undefined. And the program was to accumulate more and more, to consume more and more. Now the shift that took place through HV2 is to have this understanding that human being is not just the body. The human being is coexistence of one conscious entity called as the self and the material entity called as the body. And then you desire for continuity of happiness and prosperity. And you are able to see that physical facility is required only for three purposes for nurturing the body, for protecting the body and for rightly utilizing the body. And for each of these purposes, the need for physical facility is limited. Try to see whether you are able to make it out very clearly. And then the program is to understand and live in harmony at all the levels. Now the shift that we are going to have further is to realize that the self is central to human existence, body is merely an instrument. And I desire for continuity of happiness that is to be in harmony all the time. And that is the need of self. And this is fulfilled by understanding coexistence and to have the feeling and thought of coexistence. Now, this might not be very much clear to you, but as we go along, this will be more and more clear how to ensure this program for each one of us. So you can see how we are shifting from one state to another state. Earlier, you used to assume that human being is merely the body. Then you could be able to see that human being is coexistence of self and body. And now you are able to see further that the self is central to the human existence, body merely being a material instrument, right? And then this clarity gives you another shift in your whole program. So again, I suggest that you try to observe this within you whether you are able to see uh, shift one and whether you are prepared for shift two. So one journey we took from the earlier state to what state we entered into after UHV2. And this is a fresh journey for each one of us to be able to see how self is central to human existence. So try to verify, try to explore within whether you are able to see the need, whether you are able to see the need for this kind of shift or not. 
So the total shift through UHV2 and UHV3 can be put in one slide in this manner. So what would be the state after UHV2 and what would be the expected state after UHV3? So human being, uh, as you could see earlier, that is coexistence of self and body. And now you are able to see that self is central. The body is used merely as an instrument. You could see that existence is not just material. It is units submerged in space. And there are two kinds of units, consciousness and material. So this will remain, but you will get more clarity about space here. You will get more clarity about submergence here, about the consciousness here in this course. The purpose became clear in terms of continuity of happiness and prosperity. But now we are seeing that it is continuity of happiness, prosperity, the feeling of prosperity being a part of this continuity of happiness. And uh, earlier we had defined this happiness to be in a state of harmony. Now you see that this harmony is a natural expression of coexistence. So going deeply, we'll say that happiness is to be in a state of coexistence and prosperity is a part of it. The program that emerged earlier after UHV2 was to understand and to live in harmony at all the four levels. Then we'll see that it becomes sharper when we are able to see that the program is to understand the coexistence and to have the feeling and thought of coexistence going further to live in coexistence. So in one slide, we can have the gist of all that we discussed so far. So there was one state of yours before UHV2. After UHV2, you took a shift and there's a further shift that is expected after UHV3. So at this juncture, you have to make out whether you are prepared for this kind of shift or not. And this course, as mentioned earlier, is going to be far more explorative. We are trying to look at things in a deeper way, in a more intensive manner. So try to make out this for yourself. Where do you expect this kind of shift after having accomplished this course? Uh, this will give you an enormous shift in your imagination, in your expectation, in your thoughts, in your desires. And you are in a much better position to contemplate upon the content that is being shared in the course. So understanding through UHV3 that can be ensured is to realize that self is central to human existence and the body is used as an instrument. The desire of human being is for continuity of happiness that is to be in harmony and is fulfilled by understanding of coexistence and the feeling and thought of coexistence. So the need of the self is the continuity of happiness and the activity of the self that will ensure this is to have the understanding, feeling and thought of coexistence. And two important points to be noted here are the need for the feeling of prosperity is a part of being in a state of continuous happiness to be in harmony at all levels. Now looking at this feeling of prosperity, when I'm able to understand the coexistence of self and body, then only I get the feeling of prosperity, isn't it? So my essential requirement is for continuity of happiness, the feeling of prosperity being a part of it. The expression in mutual relation with human being and the rest of nature in terms of behavior and work is a natural outcome of the understanding of coexistence and feeling and thought of coexistence. Now, my behavior is an expression of this understanding and feeling. My work is an expression of this understanding and feeling. The way I interact with my family members, the way I interact with my friends, the way I interact with people in the society, in my extended family, is merely an expression of what I see within. If I'm able to see my coexistence with them, I behave accordingly. If I feel that I have to struggle with them, I behave accordingly, isn't it? Similarly, when I assume that entities are struggling with each other to survive, my interaction with nature is in one manner. But when I'm able to see the coexistence in the nature, my interaction is in some other manner. So these two are important points to be noted here. And thus you'll see that there is yet another shift that is expected that can be termed as shift T. That is to be able to see that coexistence is central to existence. And on that basis, I'm able to have the understanding of coexistence, harmony and relationship. So these three words will keep on using coexistence, harmony, and relationship. So I'm able to contemplate on relationship. I'm able to understand the harmony and I'm able to realize coexistence. On this basis, I'm able to have the feeling and thought of coexistence, harmony, and relationship in the self. And I can see that this is central for continuity of happiness within me. So this is the essence uh, that we are trying to focus upon that I'm able to have this 
clarity within me that essentially there is coexistence essentially there is understanding of harmony essentially there is contemplation of relationship that is required to ensure continuity of happiness in me and on that basis only i am able to ensure my thoughts accordingly my feelings accordingly when i am able to ensure this competence within me then i am able to live accordingly with the understanding of coexistence harmony and relationship as a human being and we'll see that this is central for human conduct in the human being now with this clarity we'll see that living with the feeling of coexistence harmony and relationship is central to human conduct and this only ensures mutual happiness and mutual prosperity in my living so this is something that can be termed as shift 3 as you go along that will be more clear to you now you can take some homework for self reflection after having done this so since you have to what effort are you making for self exploration on a regular basis and what has been the outcome of it try to make out and you can share any three specific achievements through the effort that you made this is one part second would be to write down any 10 key takeaways from uhv2 what could you take away from uhv2 so this is for your own self reflection this is the homework for this particular lecture so i hope in this lecture you could get the gist of what we are today as a human being and what shifts are required in us where do we want to be so shift 1 was uh, something that we mentioned for uhv2 and the clarity that you get within yourself so to sum up the whole thing uh, we made an evaluation of what we are today as a human being and what shifts are required in us and we talked about three shifts shift 1 is something that is expected from uhv2 when you are able to see that human being is not merely the body but coexistence of self and body existence is not just material but it is submergence of nature in space and with that clarity you are able to see the shift in your program as a human being shift 2 is a further shift when you are able to see that it's not only that human being is coexistence of self and body but rather self is central to human existence you are also able to see that coexistence is central to existence with this clarity and with this you are able to see your own program your own role in terms of human conduct to have the understanding of coexistence to have the feeling and thought of coexistence and to live accordingly and the third shift that we mentioned towards the end of the lecture was to be able to see that i need to ensure understanding of coexistence harmony and relationship within me with this understanding and clarity only i am able to have the feeling and thought of coexistence harmony and relationship in me and that only percolates in my living as a human being in my relationship in my fulfillment of relationship in terms of behavior in my work and that ensures continuity of happiness within me so this is the gist of all that we discussed today i also gave you some assignment towards the end of the lecture so i hope you are going to do that when we meet for the next lecture thank you all